Yeah, I would have gone out with something punchier. Just, you know, like a big shebang at the end there, or a noise or something. Mm, that record? Yeah. Yeah. Are you busy just, uh, texting mm. someone there? No, no, just, uh, playing my Nintendo DS. What's that? Uh, it's the latest handheld portable console from Nintendo, follow-up to the Game Boy. It's got two screens, uh, and it's got a touch screen, you can touch stuff. Have you not seen the adverts on the telly? No. <laughs> uh, sorry, forgive me if I'm a bit distracted. <laughs> it's just so much fun. But you're 36. Yeah, and so what? Video games, man. That's where it's at. And the reason I'm playing it is because we got one to give away this week. Have we really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, the brand new Nintendo handheld console, it's not out until March the 11th, so actually quite soon, but it does cost £100 and you can win it for free, uh, together with an amazing goodie bag of, of PS2 games, all courtesy of BAFTA and the Video Game Awards, which were held this week. Last week. Yeah. And I went there. But, Ad, welcome back. Thanks very much. Nice uh, it was a difficult friends. show last week, without you, for a bit. And then suddenly you found it was much nicer. Yeah. Yeah, well there you go. How was the, uh, how was the gig? Cos, uh, l listeners might remember Adam last week was at, uh, All Tomorrow's Parties at Canberra Sands. How did it go? It was really good fun. It was exactly like going back to university, um, but just for three days, which is really the best way to go to university as far as I can tell. Cos you go there and you, it's, it's like a holiday camp. It's a mm. Butlins. I think it's Butlins. Mm. So it is a holiday camp. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, you said it was like one. Uh, it's, it's the way young people speak, Joe. Okay. Try and keep up. Okay. And, um, you go and you get a chalet, and there's loads of, sort of, chalets all next to each other. Well, it's like, it's exactly like student digs, basically. Yeah. So, big blocks of flats, and you, you get your little four-room berth, or six, or eight, mm. depending on how many mates you've got. Mm. I only had two, but I had to get, um, a, a four-room berth. That was the smallest one I could get. Mm. And it's great, and then you sort of, m you know, mosey on down to the, uh, you're playing your video <laughs> game again. Yeah, but keep chatting. No, that's okay. I'll just, uh, play a record. Okay. Here's 13 Senses. That's LCD sound system. Daft Punk is playing at my house. This is Adam and Joe on XFM on a Saturday afternoon. Don't forget, you can text us 83XFM. Uh, you can call us when the time comes on 0871 or email us uh, at Adam and Joe at xfm.co.uk. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we've got an amazing uh, BAFTA Video Game Award goodie bag to give away with a Nintendo DS and about eight uh, PS2 games, all the latest games. Uh, that will be winnable in the competition a bit later. Uh, what else have we got, Ad? Um, that's it. That's we, got, it. we got Rolling Stones box sets for, for the winners of people who get through on Ditties in the Dog. That's right. And we got, did you mention the tickets to Keen? I did not. Well, we've got two tickets to see the mighty Keen at the Islington Academy at the next exclusive XFM live session with Jameson Irish Whiskey so on Tuesday the 8th of March. So listen, man, carry on telling us uh, about, um, All Tomorrow's Parties and I'll keep my Nintendo DS switched off. Um, are you, are you interested in All Tomorrow's Parties? I am. I'm, yeah, I am. No, you're not. Well, I'm interested in any anecdotes, exciting things that happened, uh, funny or amusing events. I don't know if I can provide funny or amusing events from all tomorrow's parties. It was just really good fun. It was, uh, I really recommend it. It's, um... Did you sleep in one of those, sh in a chalet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's did you share a chalet? Yeah, you gotta share a chalet. With who? With people you knew? The people you went with? Yeah. Yeah. Who did you go with? I went with, uh, with, well, it won't mean anything to anyone. Okay. Okay. And, um... Did they have, because I've heard they, they sort of pipe the bands into the tellies in the chalets. Did they do that so you can sit in your chalet and you can watch? No. What's that? No. That's, no, that's a myth. not true. I think what happens is that the, the band who are curating the event, mm. uh, which this year was Slint, mm. uh, at least it was for this guy, they got two festivals this year. I think Vincent Gallo is create, curating the next one. Right. Anyway, Slint curated this year's one, uh, or th this month's one, and, um, they put special programs on one of the channels on the yeah. TV. There was a show about cane toads. Brilliant. And just lots of weird rubbish. I tried watching it, but to be honest, it wasn't a patch on ITV of a Saturday evening with You've Been Framed, which is now brilliantly no, no longer presenter-led. Just got the voiceover from Harry. Yeah, Hill. yeah, it is fantastic, isn't it? How, why is it taking them so long to make that leap? Dunno. I don't know. It is now the perfect program. Wow. That's a good Canberra Sands anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that too much for your brain to handle? No, not at all. Not at all. Subject. It just may be a reflection of, uh, 
of all tomorrow's parties. I thought you might have got really drunk and leapt off a, a chalet roof, because often there's big riots. Wasn't there famously a year when there were huge riots at Camber Sands? When there were crazy things going on. I hear stories of, you know, uh, orgies in chalets, people jumping from roof to roof, chaos on the Ferris wheel, that sort of thing. I think in the past, I think maybe when Mogwai uh, looked after it. It was famously riotous. So I thought something like that might have happened, and I maybe wasn't uh, expecting uh, the viewing of You've Been Framed to be the top, you know, the top thing. The viewing of You've Been Framed is always the top thing in any given situation. That's very true. And, um, it's really very hard to compete with it when it's on form, which it was last weekend. Yeah. But no, it was. All those things you mentioned were happening. I don't believe there's ever been any rioting, because it's a very well-organized and, uh, enjoyable festival, mm. and rioting mm. wouldn't be mm. enjoyable. Well, you know, rock rioting. Not to necessarily destruct Joy. Riot, a riot of joy. Pushing, you mean. And happiness. Some shoving. Yeah. And anarchic behavior. Well, there was a there was a bit, but it was respectful, because it's, uh, you know, it's a respectful liberal crowd there. And it's just fun. Yes, there was a great deal of sex and, uh, drug taking and, and, uh, minor violence. And yes, I did get involved with a great deal of fat. But mainly it's about the music, Joe. The music, the music, okay. the music, the music, the music. And for me, it was all about seeing Spoon, my favourite band, who were, who were amazing. They were fantastic, on fire, on form. I, to be honest, I didn't know any of the rest of the bands. I knew about Slint, but, uh, their music is like soundtrack music for horror films, basically. Very slow horror films, mm. where nothing really happens. And, um, they were pretty good, though, I have to say. The rest of it was all, like, Deer Hoof and, um, Polar Goldie Cats, Need New Body, Fawn Fables. They were quite good, Fawn Fables. I'm not making any of these up. These are real bands. Wow. Mighty Flashlight, The Red Nails. You see someone out there is probably thinking, yeah, yeah, why? Don't you know about them? They're wicked, you idiot. You shouldn't be hosting a radio program. You should be digging ditches, you dick. But, um, you know, what can I tell you? I've never heard of any of these people. The Naysayer? Anyway, they were very good, and I had a great time. Good. Should we play something by someone we have heard of? Okay, this is, um, the Psychedelic Furs. And, uh, I was at another gig the other day. I was like, oh, I've got a lot of gigs, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Robin Hitchcock was playing, and he did a cover of this song, which is from an album that was really big when we were at school. Do you remember the Psychedelic Furs, Mirror Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you ever get that album? Nope. Are you sure? I only really heard of the Psychedelic Furs when they were on The Breakfast Club. Man, you had that album, you lunatic. It was in your collection. Really? Yeah, I, I was just posing. I know you were posing. Let's hear it. Well, I don't know why you would pose with this. Check out the cheesy production on this bit. It's a lovely song. Psychedelic Furs, Ghost in You. That's the killers. With all these things that I've done. Uh, and that's taken from their album Hot Fuss, which is one of those albums that you should just have. Although, if you don't buy it, they'll release every single thing on, on it as a single at some stage, so you could buy it that way and assemble it from the singles. Uh, don't forget we've got a Nintendo DS and one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight PlayStation games to give away today. Uh, we'll be doing that for our text competition, but first of all, we're gonna play Crap Commentary Corner. It's time to call in, you could win something amazing, let us begin. Can you guess which film we're playing? I hear what they're saying. Crap commentary corner. Ah. So, uh, of course, this is the competition where you have to guess what movie this commentary is taken from and who's commentating. Uh, so this time it's two voices, an actor and the director. Should be quite easy if you've seen the film. Uh, this was a very difficult crap commentary to put together because I had to lift a great deal of swearing out of it. An incredible amount of swearing. I think the most swearing I've ever come across in any film and any commentary ever combined. But I'm saying too much. So remember the numbers 0871 222 1049. What do we get? What's the prize for this? Uh, the Keen tickets. Two, pa two pairs of tickets to see Keen at the Islington Academy. Uh, at the next exclusive XFM live session with Jameson Irish Whiskey on Tuesday the 8th of March. So if you can guess who this is commentating on what film, call 0871 222 1049. Here's the first clip. It's hold of that, look. Bang on. Bang it. Slag. Just love it, though, look. What a film, look. Look at it, look. Look, look. What a crash. crash. It's what a mine and that. I love this, look. Look at this, look. It's me, look. Love it. I love it. I love it, look. Bowling about what I've given it a big and look at the swagger on it, look. Look at the swagger. This is bang on this. It's tingles and everything. I'm the man that would have fingered all that love all this, but gets hold of that bosh, gets hold of that crash. He loves it. Whatever it is, he loves it. I love it. Bish, bash, bosh, wallop. 
Is that Vinnie Jones on the Friday Night Project? It could be, couldn't it? But thank the Lord that hasn't been released on DVD yet. Uh, shall we have, uh, one more clip? Don't forget 0871 222 1049 if you want to win these tickets to see Keen. Who is this commentating over what film? Here's clip number two. Look at that boat, look at oh, it. Look at that boat, look at that boat. Look at that neck, look. I know, an old goose. An old goose neck, look. Goose neck, he wants to get in her eight year old drawers. <laughs> what are you doing? Do something, do something. Do something, do something. Funny. Do something dirty. Like a swim in there. Stickleback. He's got a good boat, that goat, doesn't he? It's not a film noir. Film Orange. <laughs> film Orange. Nice. Nice to get a reference to Film Orange. Uh, go, go, he's got a good boat, that one. Yeah, that uh, goat's got a good uh, boat. He's got a good boat. What movie is that and who is commentating on it? We really need the name of the movie and the two people commentating to win those tickets to Keen. 0871 222 It's a yachting, some kind of yachting based film. Because of the goat on the boat? Yeah, they're, they're talking about boats. And, and, and goats? Yeah. Some film with some sort of goat that sails a boat. Is it White Squall? No goats in that. There's boats, but no goats. Mm. Oh, 0871 to win tickets for Keen. Uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Yay, 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 yay. That's the future heads with Kate Bush's Hounds of Love. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. We're playing crap commentary corner. This is the clip that you've had to identify who was speaking in it and what film they were speaking about. Can we hear clip number two again, please, Adam? Number two, you want? Yes, please. Uh, we've got two callers on the line, but if you just tuned in, this is what they're trying to guess. Look at that boat, look at oh, it, look. Look, look, look. Look, look. Look, look. look at her neck, look. Oh, no, no, goose. The old goose neck, look. Goose neck, he wants to get in her eight-year-old drawers. <laughs> what are you doing? Do something, do something. Do something funny. Do something dirty. Like a swim in there. Stickleback. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good boat, that guy, hasn't It's not a film noir. Film orange. 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 You can't really say orange. Orange. <laughs> so Mel, uh, is on the line. Hello, Mel. Hello, Mel. Speak to us, please, Mel. Melissa. Oh, sorry, Melissa. That's very rude of us. Yeah. Um, is it the Trouble Factory and Danny Dyer? Uh, yes, but you need to have the third person. There were two people speaking there. Who was the other person speaking? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Mel. You oh, just let in there as well. There was no kind of foreplay or anything like that, Melissa. Didn't say hello. You just pun it, you, you, you shouted at us for getting your voice wrong. You know. Screamed the answer. It was very brutal. Do you mind me saying that? No, not really. I, I, because I love you and, you know, it's just I haven't spoken to you for a while and suddenly you're just being very distant. Sorry. Are you angry, no. Melissa? Are you in a hurry? Are you busy? I've just pulled over on the motorway, actually. Well, there you go. You're in that sort of 70 miles an hour frame of mind, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, and we're expecting you to slow down, so that's wrong. Well, do you want a pair of tickets to Keen, see Keen anyway? That'd be lovely. Could we, should we just tear a bit of one of the tickets off? Because she didn't get one of the names. So you'll take a mate, but they won't get in and they'll be angry with you, and that'll be a small punishment. You'll have to stand behind the, at the very back of the venue, and you, and there'll be a really tall person in front of you, so it'll be slightly ruined, but you will get to see the, uh, gig. Is that okay, Melissa? Yeah, that's great, thank you. Alright, thank you for calling. Thanks you did, calling, haven't got Melissa. it totally right, that's the right film, Football Factory, the right actor. Danny Dyer. So all we need now is Mike, who's on the other line, to complete the holy trinity C of just football say, uh, violence. <laughs> it's an appropriate name. <laughs> Danny Dyer. <laughs> Cause he is Dyer. Well, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that. Uh, Mike, are you on the line? What kind of support is that? I didn't Hang see on, that. hang on. <laughs> because I've seen Football Factory and I know what the consequences are of crossing anyone involved in it. <laughs> That's why. Mike, you on the line? Hi, I'm here, yep. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you, yep. Uh, do you agree with Melissa that, uh, that, that that was Football Factory? Yeah, I think Football Factory, yeah. I've tried to watch it a couple of times yeah. and not got very far with it, I must admit. Do you, know, do, do you know what I'm saying by, by, you know, distancing myself from Adam's comments about Danny Dyer? Well, um, I'm not too sure who Danny Dyer is, really. He's the lead actor. Oh, you're, Mike, you're uh, going to get bashed up as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some lamping tonight and I'm not going to be involved. Yeah, Hello? I'm sorry about that, yeah. Uh, I need to know who the other actor is, though. Okay, who is it? Uh, Nick Love. That's correct. I think he's the director, though, Nick Love, isn't he? I think. Oh, uh, right. I think Nick okay. Love's the director, Danny Dyer's the lead actor, Football Factory is the film. Congratulations, Mike, you get those tickets to see Keen as well. Excellent. Uh, that'll be a good gig, uh, courtesy of Jameson Irish Whiskey, the exclusive XFM live session, Tuesday the 8th of March. Uh, and yeah, Football Factory. I've never 
seen a film with more swearing in it in my entire life. And then when you watch the commentary and with the f with the audio of the film under it, there's three or four layers of swearing going on. Sometimes, uh, the world's rudest four-letter words, ha four of them happening at the same time simultaneously. Wow. It was amazing. And you know what? I think one of them slipped through in one of those clips in the background. Uh, I, c I heard the beginning yeah. of one of the F. I had to work really hard to try and fish them out, but literally, that's, that, yeah, ev everyone is swearing all the time, quietly in the background, in the surround sound channels. It's impossible to get the swearing out of it. Some people love that kind of thing. They do. Is it a swearing classic, though? I think it, it well, I don't know. Because to be a swearing classic, it's got to be watchable as well as swear, surely. What, what are other swearing classics? Midnight Run, maybe? Uh, well, uh, Eight Million Ways to Die, is it? Or is yeah, it no, oh yeah, no, I think it is a swearing classic. And, uh... Um, it is a swearing classic. It's got some amazing swearing in it. And The King of New York is kind of a swearing yeah, classic Yeah, with Christopher well. Walken, that's very true. Um, so there we go, that's Crap Commentary competition for this week. Uh, coming up later in the show you've got a chance to win eight PS2 games and a brand new Nintendo DS handheld console, which is fantastic, I can tell you. Uh, but right now what's happening? Oh, it's new music time, Joe. Hooray! And this is a band called Do Me Bad Things. Oh, I hope they do do bad things to me. Do Me Bad Things, that's not grammatical, but we will, you know. And the song is called What's Hideous. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Wowza. Um, we shouldn't let the, uh, record before that slip by uncommented on. Uh, yeah. what was it called? Do Me Bad Things with What's Hideous. Yeah, that there was you go. bizarre, wasn't it? It was a very strange record, but it's from, uh, it's from the label that gave the world the darkness, Must Destroy Records, who are a fantastic label. They've got lots of good acts on there. And uh, certainly, Do Me Bad Things, that was the weirdest thing I've heard in a while. It was a sort of combination of Radio 2 easy listening music and rock, wasn't it? As and if they'd discovered the two bits of music that hadn't yet been fused together. Well, it was kind for very of. Good reasons. It was the same sort of thing that Outcast are doing, except whereas Outcast are approaching the whole thing from the hip hop point of view. Right. They're approaching it from the rock. Wow. Avenue. That's my little uh, 50p's worth mm -hmm. on the subject. It's good. Thank you very much. So, this week's text competition, we've got uh, a bag of amazing goodies from B uh, the Bath the Video Games Awards here. Uh, I think eight different PS2 games. Uh, Halo 2 and a Nintendo DS, the new Nintendo Game Boy with a touch screen and everything, worth a great deal of money. Uh, all those video games and things. Um, okay, so what are we going to do for the competition? Well, I wondered, Adam and listeners, if you've seen the new trailer for War of the Worlds, the new Spielberg, uh, Tom Hanks film. Haven't seen it yet, no. Very okay. excited. It's quite exciting. Uh, I was watching it this week online and it has, uh, Tom Cruise and little Daco Dakota Fanning in a car driving away from a flyover that's being flipped up by a big alien. And the chunks of the flyover are spinning through the air, crushing houses, and lorries are coming off the flyover. It's very spectacular. But it struck me that in blockbuster movies these days, there's only one incremental difference in each one, you know? Because I thought, well, I've seen trucks flying through the air in Twister. Mm -hmm. I've seen flyovers being destroyed in, uh, Deep Impact. Uh, I've seen people driving away from Oblivion in every single film, so what's new? It's basically just a permutation of stuff we've seen before, and in fact, if you think about it, you can just name whole special effects films uh, by their key special effects shots. Like Paris and New York destroyed by meteors would be Arm uh, Armageddon. Armageddon out of here, yep. New York destroyed by a tidal wave. Oh, uh, I don't know. Deep, Deep Impact. Right. Houses destroyed by flying cars and cows, Twister. So my question for you listeners is, can you think of a new effect shot that would blow everybody's mind? Something that has never even been approached before, okay? I had an idea, just to inspire people, and my idea is this. I don't know what the film's called, uh, but what happens in this film is another, another completely civilized planet, just like the Earth, uh, comes flying towards the Earth, mm -hmm. and the two planets collide. Maybe you could call it When Worlds Collide. Yeah. But it would be this amazing shot where you'd be looking at this other planet, this shot would take about 15 minutes, it would get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, so it would go from just being a planet floating in space until you could actually see the buildings and the people <laughs> on the surface. And it would get so close that you were actually, the tops of the heads of people on Earth would be impacting with the tops of the heads of the people on the other planet. Cars would be falling, it would be incredible. And the two planets would actually squash and crush together. So yeah, it, they would be going slow, they wouldn't be hurtling though. No. It would just be the unstoppable force the of... inexorable approach of another whole civilized planet. Wouldn't that momentum. be incredible? And as they got very close, gravity would all screw up and things mm. would be flying around. It would be incredible. It'd be like one of those amazing religious Armageddon pictures in the National Gallery. That's a good idea, man. You should do that. But can you beat that for a special effect shot that if it appeared in a trailer would have everybody shelling out their six quid? 
Uh, text us 83XFM, email us adamandjoe at xfm.co.uk, or if you've got a really killer idea, call us 0871 222 1049. What's at stake is a Nintendo DS, the brand new Game Boy from Nintendo, uh, loads of PS2 games, Halo 2. Oh, it's a great prize. What about this? A boy is on his skateboard mm. and he's listening to Green Day mm. on his headphones, maybe on his iPod, mm. and his headphones blow up. And what happens? His, his head, his ears get burned. Oh, I haven't thought that far. That's a good opening shot. Keep uh, thinking. Uh, okay, and he hits a pothole, and the pothole blows up. If you can beat that, it's going to be tricky to beat and, that. And his, wheel, his wheels blow up. That's really good. Eight, th text eight three X F M. And he's wearing shorts. His shorts blow up. It's not good, Adam. It's not good. But <laughs> keep thinking. Play record. His keep hair blows up. Well, that's quite good. And his ears blow up. This is um. This is the Kingsbury Manx. <laughs> Do you understand anything of what Lila just said to us, Joe? Uh, yeah, Lila's just been explaining some of the amazing special effects shots that, uh, you've all been, uh, calling in with, and yes, I did understand it. That was a very good one, just came in on the phone. Lots coming in by text as well. We've been asking you to describe a special uh, a special effects shot that, uh, we've never seen before. Uh, Adam and I making the point that in blockbusters these days, the special effects sequences are, are the same, with one tiny permutation changed. And we'd like to see a special effects sequence that's completely original. Uh, and the person who comes up with the most original one is going to win a Nintendo DS, uh, loads of PS2 games, Halo 2, all sorts of great things. And the best way to communicate your idea, I suppose, is to email us, Adam and Joe at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, or text. And if you do text, don't forget to, uh, to put your name on. We'll read out some of the best ones in a second, because there are some really, really good ones. Uh, coming through. I sound a bit like a patronising Blue Peter presenter <laughs> talking to children. Yeah. Really good. Well done, Sally in East Cheam, aged six. So terrific we'll, idea. We'll hear some more of your terrific ideas after, uh, after a few ads and some more music. Here on XFM, keep it boring. <laughs> XFM. That's a band called Franz Ferdinand. Don't know if you might have heard of them. Oh, it's a very good name for a band, isn't it? And I've seen pictures of them and they're quite good looking and one of them's got a shirt and a tie and he's got cheekbones and I think they're going to be quite big. But then, them's the ones. Yeah, I um, think every band that comes out from now on should be exactly like them. I That's think they my... probably will be. Okay, good. So, we've been asking you to text in your ideas for a special effects CGI sequence that has never been pulled off before. Uh, one that would be exciting and novel, unlike what they're currently sticking into our cinemas. At stake is a Nintendo DS, the brand new, touchable, double screen, Game Boy thing. Uh, and lots of PS2 and Xbox games and stuff, courtesy of the BAFTA Games Awards. So, Adam Buxton, I'm going to read you some of these, and I want you to know your opinion. As a moviegoer, a man who likes blockbusters, yeah, I yeah. Like a, I like a good special effect. I abhor a bad one. Okay, well, let's see what you think of these. Aliens suck up all of the Earth's oceans into a huge vessel of some kind, then use it to extinguish the sun. Andrew from Durham. Uh, that's good. That's good. A massive, sharp alien ship cuts the Earth in half, a second's pause, then the earth, uh, the earth, the earth s slides apart. You know, almost like a decapitation that you don't realise it's happened until a second after. Uh, yeah, that's been done too much, man. That's okay, well, I'm sorry, Marcus. Buxton doesn't approve of that. It's like the bit in uh, Death Ship or whatever it was called when Death they all ship? they all get you know, is that ghost ship? Oh yeah 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 yeah. No, hey, what's that called? There's a whole dance floor and they all get sliced. Yeah, that's by not a, a space. Oh, what's that random called? cable? But that that whole vibe of people Slicing being people sliced up. and then moments like later the movie Cube. you yeah. see them kind of sliding. Okay, apart. We, uh, okay, get this one. A brewery is hit by a huge space chunk, and a tidal wave of intoxicating booze washes over the city, causing mass vomiting, riots, and drunkenness. You could have Johnny Vegas as the space chunk. Yeah. Do you like that one? Mm, yeah, that's you possible. You quite like that one? Possible. Okay, the moon crashes into the earth, stopping it spinning. This causes everyone to fall over for a moment. Then God shows up to fix it all. That's anything- I like God showing up to I fix it all. I don't like anything with God because okay. it'll be- because the casting- Can you imagine who they'll get? It'll be Alan Rickman- Brian Blessed. Or Ricky Gervais. Giant space fish alien swallows the earth. That's yeah. a short- it's a punchy one. Giant space fish alien swallows earth. I'm interested to see what's yeah. inside the fish alien. Well, let's start, haven't gone into details. Okay, the moon crashes into the earth, stops it from spinning, everything falls over from the momentum. Uh, oh, that's the same one as before, one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Okay, how about a rocket hitting the earth, shooting all the way through, goes through the core and out the other side? That's quite good, isn't it? Like a kind of bullet through an apple. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Massive. Well, yeah. a living, A living apple. I think that's good. 
I, I think that's good. I think that gets into, you know, the, what, what do you call it, the semi-final. But what's, why is that good? Because it would just leave a massive hole. Because I've never seen it before. It would be amazing. But what's wrong with Core? You've the core, that's true, it's very similar to the film The Core. But that, you know, it's, except, uh, this guy's talking about a massive hole, I yeah, 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 fine, but yeah. the core is the same thing. I like the idea of it punching up through the other side of the earth, like a normal happy day in Australia, and suddenly, bang, women, children, chairs, Australians. thrown into the air, Australians thrown into the air. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, like, okay. I like that. Here's another simple one. Sandals, hair pieces and belt buckles being blown to oblivion. Phil in Sutton. I just thought it was very specific about what he'd like to see blown up. Sandals, hair pieces and belt, belt, belt buckles. He just wants to blow up Troy. The film Troy, yes. Well, that's fair enough, I understand, but I don't think that's going through to any kind of final. Here's one for the Bridget Jones generation. What about the world's famous landmarks being turned into chocolate and eaten by a giant woman? <laughs> well, that will be made at some stage, I yeah. imagine, yeah. There's so many of these. We have been inundated. Those are some of the, the better ones. Uh, are we gonna pick a winner? Let's pick a winner right now. Come do on. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know, man. You think we should pick a winner? Give, give me one Give me one more track to pick a winner, because okay. I have to look at some that have come through uh, recently. All right, here's the Presidents of the United States of America. Not the actual Presidents, you understand, but a band called the Presidents. Uh, you know, I can see why you might be confused, but this song is called Love Everybody. Wow, that's the Presidents of the USA with Love Everybody, and our producer Lila informs me that Blink-182, Joe, are splitting up. I heard that. Yeah. Isn't that sad? Yeah, and V. And V. Yeah. What's to know who I'm more upset about? Yeah. Well, uh, Presidents of the USA can step into the breach, the yawning chasm left by, uh, V and Blink-182, sadly, splitting up. Well, that's Lila whispering. There's a lot of whispering going on. What's the point? We can't hear you, Lila. <laughs> Just talk. Just speak. Um, so you were, you were talking about football earlier on, the football factory, the frightening world of the football factory. Yeah. And I always think as a kind of weed that football is just going to go away. Slowly the weeds will take over and, uh, and smother the footballs and the, f the football will <laughs> eventually go. Because men and women really are becoming just one amorphous blob, you know, and I've always thought of football as being about maleness in some mm. way. Now I know I'm saying a lot of contentious rubbish here, but you know what I mean, Joe, as a, as a fellow football phobe. Yeah, neither Adam and I are keen on football. We got no uh, disrespect for people who like it, but I, I f I f uh, to me, it seems as if they've been playing the same game, exactly the same game, over and over again for my entire life. Half my problem with football, right, is just that my face is constantly shoved in the in the ball and the foot by everyone, and it's sort of accepted that if you're a man, especially, mm. you love football. Mm. People ask you what your favourite team is, that kind of thing, yeah. and it's always a bit embarrassing when you say, "Well, to be honest with you, I don't have a favourite team because I don't like football. I like." sewing and yeah. flowers and leaves and so I can't speak to you, please don't hurt me, that kind of thing which happens to me a lot. And an example of this sort of attitude is the Emirates, am I pronouncing that right, Ad? You mm -hmm. know, Emirates Airways. Mm -hmm. Uh, it says, and it's uh, pictures of um, people playing football on a beach, all different nations, different types yes. of people, uh, lovely beach, and the ad, the voiceover says, we all speak the same language, football. And, uh, that's their excuse mm. for saying you should travel on Emirates to different countries because you'll be able to go and play football with foreign people. Yeah. And I just feel annoyed by that. I don't feel I speak the language of football at all. The only language I feel that we all have in common, especially men, is the language of Onan. And if there was something you know, about that. The language of uh, onanism. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are other languages. The language of video games, the language of telly, the language of films. I don't speak the language of video games, really. But I, these I, are all conversations that you can just turn to a stranger and go, have you seen so-and-so? That's the joy of football, isn't it? You can just turn to a complete stranger and go, shoot a game last night, and there you go, you're off. That's the charm. Same with video games, same with telly, same with movies, same with p books, if you're in intellectual circles, same with onanism, if you're a member of a dirty club. See, I believe that onanism is the only thing that you could spark so up what a would you how would you with. so what would you turn to you turn to your neighbor and you'd say in the language of onanism have you uh, played an enjoyable game of five knuckle shuffle recently mm. and then they would be able to describe to piece. you no they well, well obviously if you said it in the wrong way it could seem creepy mm. but if you uh, were just chatting about it you could swap techniques that kind of thing and uh, how long the onanism lasts, that sort of thing. But even June Sarpong on T4 this morning was talking about the fact that people should log on to their website saying, if you love football and celebrities, and let's face it, who doesn't? You know what I mean? It's just that attitude. Everyone loves football. Everyone loves celebrities. I don't love football. I 
hate football and I don't love celebrities except some of the more attractive ones. Wow. Okay? Well, thanks. Good. <sighs> I just wanted to get that good. off my chest. Good, good. Now, here's some celebrities that have been talked about a great deal and probably are partial to a little bit of onanism, I would imagine. It's Supergrass. <laughs> Razor light. They've got hair with attitude. And that's called Somewhere Else. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Now it's time to bring our BAFTA, uh, video game award competition to a close. Uh, did I mention I went to the awards on Tuesday night? Yes, you did. Was that enjoyable? It was very enjoyable. Who was hosting? Uh, Jonathan Ross. Oh, yeah. Off of the telly. And, uh, well, you know, I'm a big video game fan and it was, it was great to set eyes on some of the people who are currently corrupting the youth of the nation. Uh, I have to say that Halo 2 didn't win much. Half-Life 2 swept the board. Does that mean anything to you, Adam Buxton? I know the names of those games, but mm. I don't know what they're mm. like. Well, Halo 2 completely swept the board. No, sorry. Half-Life 2 swept the board. Halo 2 won only the best Xbox game. Disappointing for Halo 2 fans. Uh, anyway, on exit, I was given this fantastic goodie bag. Uh, full of video games and a Nintendo DS, and that's exactly what we've got to give away to you today, courtesy of BAFTA. And we've been asking you for the most incredible special effect shot you can think of that would bring people back to the cinemas, and we've had an ama amazing response. I think it's been a b uh, the biggest response we've ever had to any competition here on the Adam and Joe radio show. Wow. What, what do you think about that? I'm, I'm knocked out. It's, it's, it, it, it is uh, extraordinary. Uh, however, I don't think anyone's beat my one. Your, just to remind people what yours yeah. was. Yours was two, two, uh, Earth-style planets. Yeah. Earth and another, uh, inhabited planet. Yeah. Um, going towards each other fairly slowly. Yeah. Say... Colliding. You know, uh, only, only about six miles an hour, something like that, isn't it? And they collide very, very slowly and gradually they squash each other so that at, cer at a certain point, presumably the climax of the movie, mm. you know, the tops of the buildings on the other planet mm. are touching oh, the tops of the buildings on our planet. Brilliant. It's, it's a good idea, man. It's, it's a good idea. You should, you should, someone's gonna nick it. Well, you know what, as Tom Drewell in Ealing has emailed in saying, of course, there is a, a story called When Worlds Collide, which, which I knew is what, why I mentioned it, a novel from 1932 where a similar sort of thing happened, but I think that was a meteor-style thing. I don't think that was an actual inhabited planet colliding with another planet. But okay, we've whittled it down. Uh, my two favourite are, an evil villain rigs a bomb onto the London Eye and explodes it, uh, dislodging it so it rolls through the surrounding buildings in London, taking them all out, crushing them, until it comes to a stop and then spins round, similar to a coin that's run out of energy. You know, you think they'll never stop spinning. Yeah. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? So many opportunities for dogs to almost be crushed and people to snatch them at the last minute. That's right, you just l leap between the spokes. I went on the London Eye for the first time this week. Wow. And uh, it was really good and actually, you know, that couldn't happen because they've got very good security on there. I know. It's like, uh, it's, you know, it's sponsored by British Airways and it's very much like taking a flight. Mm. Uh, you have to, you have to be careful, no sharp objects in your bag. I do wish they'd make it go really, really fast though, like at a fun fair. Mm. You know, just as you're about to get off. I'll take Raiders. But that's, that's a good idea, that is a good so idea. That's and I bet you someone's gonna do that, surely. That's the kind of thing that would turn up in a kind of sicko James Bond film. And the other one I like is this one from John. Uh, sorry, the giant, the, uh, the London Eye one is from Colin in Gravesend. And John has come up with a black hole appears near the earth and everything gets slower and darker. Gravity starts to fail and buildings shake apart upwards into the sky. I like that because I've just never seen things being sucked upwards in a film. Like hoovered up. Someone else had a giant straw, aliens with a giant straw. There's a bit of hoovering upwards up. in, in sort of twister films, you so know. You know what my problem is? That we've got so many entries I can't control them all. My paperwork's gone haywire. You weren't, you weren't equipped to I deal with the incredible response. response. I know. Wow. I, I feel like giving it to the one with the straw, but I can't find it. Oh, cockle shells. Can I have one more chance? I tell you what, next link I'll just quick, very quickly say the name of the winner. Okay, and, be and, the whole then, thing and then we'll go into Ditties in the Dock. Yeah. And th Ditties in the Dock this week is a playoff between... Explain what this is, oh, Joe. Oh dear, well I tried to make this up last night, but it's not very good. Uh, uh, Proto-white rap. Okay, so in the early 80s when rap was, was just emerging in America, it was imitated by various, uh, you know, rock bands who tried to integrate a bit of rap into their songs. Right. I'm thinking Ant Music, Adam and the Ants, I'm thinking the Tom Tom Club, I'm thinking, who else? Have you got any other uh, examples? Well, I misunderstood. I thought it was proto-rap full stop. Okay, let's have a talk about it and explain it properly when we come back. Okie doke. Until then, here's another free play. This is Della Cota. <laughs> That's oh. the, the Rock by <laughs> Della Cota. <laughs> Very nice. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, good one. Uh, all right, so have you found a winner yet, Joe? Yes, Jenny Statham, you have won. 
uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon 2, Burnout 2, Takedown, Halo 2, Pro Evolution Soccer 4, Tony Hawk's Underground 2, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, The Grand Theft Auto Soundtrack, Prince of Persia, Warrior Within, Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, a Nintendo DS with a free Metroid Prime Hunters demo. What a goodie bag! That has got to be the best prize uh, ever given away for anything in the world. All for coming up with a fairly straightforward idea of the London Eye being unhinged and then crushing London and spinning as if it's a coin. Uh, you know, I just think that would be something people would want to see. Yeah, definitely. If it, if it was done well, that would be a great bit in a film, I think. And you know, I would have actually given it to the guy who had the aliens suck up everything with a straw, but I couldn't find it. Don't admit that, man. Well, I'm just being honest. But thank you for that. was an overwhelming response. And, you know, uh, sorry, because there are probably some, well, might possibly have been some better ones in there. But never mind. There you go. It's Ditties in the Dock time. Already? So, yeah, of course. It's uh, only 20 minutes left of the show, even less, in fact. And just to remind you that this is the part of the show where we fight it out to see who will get to play the final song of our two hours here on XFM on a Saturday afternoon. This week, the battle is between two songs that feature kind of rapping, but not intentional rapping as such. Is that fair? I don't know. It's something like that. It's proto-rap. Early rap. Not by rappers, but maybe by rock artists who tried to have a little go at rapping, either when rapping was in its infancy, or before rap had even emerged as an art form, a music form. So you, you start off, Adam, who've you got? Hey, can I just ask, who won last week in the end? That's a good question, I did. Oh, really? That's a big surprise. Yeah, d what, are you accusing us of cheating? Yeah, yeah. Do you think we fixed it? I think because I wasn't there, you definitely fixed do it. Do you think maybe, uh, we forgot actually to get hold of your record? Do you think that could have happened? And yeah. that you actually won, but we didn't have the record, so we had to sort of bend it, because we didn't have your record. I can't believe that would happen, because... Well, you no, know, it's, it's unfeasible, isn't it? Anyway. It's unfeasible. So this week, shall I start this week? Yeah. Uh, this week I've got some Bob Dylan. Now, it's often said about Bob Dylan that he was the godfather of rap in some ways. Um, I've even heard some rappers saying that, so it's not just the kind of thing that kind of middle-aged jerks like me say. I am suggesting that you vote for a track called It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding, all right? I'm only bleeding, right? And it's an amazing sort of spoken poetry type thing. Well, it's not. It's just sort of encanted in this mesmerizing way by Bob Dylan. It's one of the most uh, extraordinary pieces of music that he did, and I think you couldn't really fail to be impressed by it, even if you're not really a Bob Dylan fan. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. Very long, so I probably wouldn't be able to play the whole thing. But it's all right, Ma. I'm only bleeding is what I want you to vote for. Vote for Bob Dylan. Okay, so, uh, it's gonna be Bob Dylan versus, and once again I went through quite a lot of rejected records to get here. I was gonna choose, to really annoy you, Adam Buxton, uh, The Sid's Not Rap by Kenny Everett. I've even burnt it onto that CD, but I, I listened noticed. to it, and it stinks. It's absolutely worthless and unlistenable, even though Kenny Everett was a genius. Uh, but, so instead, I've chosen, uh, Blondie with Rapture. Very obvious choice. Debbie Harry, of course, doing some very early rapping, one of the first um, white rock stars to hear rapping in New York and try and copy it. She has a pretty good go, uh, and she does well in some parts and badly in other parts. But the groove she's rapping over is fantastic. It's a very famous record. Uh, so there you go. So this week's Ditties in the Dock is Bob Dylan with... Bob Dylan with It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding. Versus, uh, Blondie with Rapture. 0871 222 1049. And five, it's gonna be the best of five. We've got two sets of the Rolling Stones singles to give away. It's, it's a lovely chunky box full of every Rolling Stones single between 68 and 71. Very valuable prize. I think it's actually worth 40,000 pounds. That's amazing. It is amazing. You can buy a house. Um, so there we go. Actually, it's probably worth about, about 10, 20 pounds. Um, but there we go. 0871 222 1049. Blondie or Dylan. Uh, give us a call. XFM. Don't look at me that way. It was an honest mistake. All right, the bravery, calm down. Oh. Don't take it personally. So it's that's, uh, the, bra the bravery, yeah, so listen out yeah. for them. They're gonna be big this year. They're gonna be huge. You heard it here on XFM. They were on the Friday Night Project, weren't they? Were they? I yeah, all I the big bands are going on the Friday Night Project, which gets double the ratings of Nathan Barley. Did you know that? Double the ratings, even though it's on afterwards. Mm. And it's, uh, possibly not as good. I don't know what anyone else thinks. Um, there we go. This is Adam and Joe coming, uh, up to the last nine minutes of our show. It's Ditties in the Dock. 
Are we gonna have the jingles? Oh yeah, a bit of jingles. Well, we had a little bit of time, so I thought I'd, uh, just e I just wanted to say one thing. Yeah. This is just a little thing that's been bugging me. Yeah. You know the Boogeyman? Uh, the, the new film Boogeyman, yeah, yeah, the Boogeyman. For fifteen years, everyone told me there was no such thing as the mm. Boogeyman. Well, that's because there isn't. It's a bogeyman. It's a Bogeyman, like bogeys. Bo boogie. Suddenly he's transformed into like a boogeyman. Well, it's an American thing anyway, isn't it? The, the, no, nobody has the boogeyman in Britain, do they? The American. No one's parents I, I, say anything about the boogeyman. I might be wrong, but I think even the Americans called him the bogeyman. I think it's because there was already a film called The Bogeyman. Oh, there's a fantastic film called The Bogeyman involving a smashed mirror and shards of it that end up in people's faces. Now, I, you know, as Pretty I say, uh, an, an American out there might like to correct me, but uh, I believe the boogeyman has just been created not to conflict with bogeys. And instead we've got this, you know, big boogeyman going around with a big afro. So you think it might have been called the boogeyman, the, the bogeyman in America, and they might have put an extra O for the British market so it's not confused by some sort of snot peddling yeah. horror monster. Yeah, they're not gonna call him the booger man. The booger man. But, no, because, uh, you know, Raymond Briggs has got the, uh, fungus the bogeyman as well as yeah. the other thing. But it's the bogeyman. The guy under the bed that you're frightened of is the bogeyman, not the boogeyman. The boogeyman is, I don't know, Robbie Williams or someone like that. It's just that, you know, I was just a little worried about the boogeyman. Well, well done clearing that up. Thanks very much. This is Diddy's in the Dock this week. It's proto-rappers, uh, white rockers who got caught by the rat bug either before it existed or after. Uh, we've got Bob Dylan versus Blondie. Blondie with Rapture and Bob Dylan with... It's all right, Ma. I'm only bleeding. Uh, the f last two callers who come through are gonna win the Rolling Stone singles collection. We're doing that because you've only been given two copies, but it's a, a fantastic collection there, available in the shops probably sometime now. Sharon I I is on the line. Hello, Sharon. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. I, I love you, Sharon. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks very much. So, Sharon, uh, who are you voting for? It has to be Bob. Oh, yeah. Do you know, you know the track I'm talking about, presumably, don't you? Yeah. And it's quite... I owe a lot to Bob. I owe a good day to Bob. Why do you owe a lot to Bob? Because he was the original gangster rapper, and if it wasn't for him, <laughs> I would have seen 50 Pence last year at Reading getting bottled off the stage. Really? <laughs> Were you throwing bottles at 50 Cent? I wasn't, I wasn't. Oh, well that's amazing. What, you're, you're a human tribute to the evolution of rap. Yeah. Um, so, that's one nil to Adam. Thanks, Thanks very, very much, much Sharon. James, hello James. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, marvellous, thank you. How are you? Well, we're okay, thank James, you very much. James, you sound a little bit louche. <laughs> you sound as if you're sitting in your easy chair, smoking a cigarette with a large cravat, whilst reading some rather witty poetry. That's uncanny, I can't believe she's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing the same thing myself later this afternoon. James, who are you going to vote for? Uh, Dylan, please. Dylan! Ooh. It's 2-0 to Dylan's. Buxton! Thanks very Dylan's much for wiping James. the floor with Harry and Blondie and Rapture. I've got a feeling you might claw a little... Do you think? You think this back. is a false... A false start. Okay. A red herring. I just know the way our producer Lila takes oh, the calls. Oh, oh, she's looking flabbergasted oh. at the such cheek. Come on, looking then. Looking vilified. Mark, are you there? Yeah, mate. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? <laughs> not bad, not bad. Are you cotching? Yeah, man, just chilling. Are you? Good man. What's cotching? <laughs> cotching just means chilling. Wow. Um, so, Mark, uh, what are you voting for? Let's have a bit of rapture, please, mate. A bit of rapture. Well done. The tide may be starting to turn. Uh, that's 2-1 still to Buxton. From James in his easy chair to Mark with his barrow down the market. Yeah. Selling cockles and being cheeky. He uh, voted I, I for don't Rapture. think Mark's selling cockles, <laughs> but he's probably <laughs> selling something, and I'd, I'd, I'll have a bit. Um, thanks very much for calling, Mark. We do appreciate that. Steve, are you on the line? Yes, I am. How are you going? Very well, Steve. You realise being our penultimate caller, you've won the Rolling Stone single, 68 to 71. Is that something that makes you happy, or will it, will it go straight on eBay? Absolutely happy. Very happy, yes. Thank you very much. Good man. Well, that'll be, uh, coming to you. And what's your vote? Is it gonna be Dylan or Blondie? Only because you get Blondie every day on the radio, it's gotta be Dylan and <laughs> Oh! Well, that's it, isn't yes, it? Yes, thank well, what you. Well, about, what about Marnie? Didn't he was on the fifth line. Who's going to win the other Rolling Stones thing? Oh. Marnie, are you there? It's, it's Moot. Yeah, I'm here. Marnie, what's going on? Who are you going to vote for? Well, it, it had to be Dylan, because Adam sold it really well, plus the Blondie rapping is really, really bad. Can I, can I win the Rolling Stones thing? Yeah, yeah you, you can. can. 
because I've been on once before and I, you gave me a really rubbish book of <laughs> hair. <laughs> book of hair? I remember that, yeah. It was so bad and you were so, you were really embarrassed to give it away. Well, at least you got it. Most people don't get their prizes. Like, that's since, not true. Can that's I just, not true, that's not true, Lila, since, I'm sorry. Since then, Lila has really pushed out the boat on the prize front. We get amazing prizes now on the show well, and that's I'm, all I'm thanks really to Lila's to diligent work. And, uh, well, that's, that's great, that's money. I'm glad you're voting. Over. A for, washover? Uh, for Bob. A washout? A washout, walk a over. whitewash, a walkover, all those things. A, a wash right over. <laughs> a slap in the face to Cornish. A slap in the face to Blondie, because I mean, basically it is a good track and I know what you mean about it being groovy and all that stuff, but yeah. it may as well be John Barnes doing the rapping on there. It's, Ooh. it's just atrocious stuff. So anyway, I guess I won't be able to play the whole of this, but I'll get as much in as I can. It's Bob Dylan with It's Alright Ma, I'm Only Bleeding. And thank you very much for voting for that and thanks for listening to the show. We'll see you next week. Bye. Same time.